What exactly is going on right here, I'll show you towards the end of the video, because I may have sort of emptied the LEGO factory a little bit. But first of all, we have to start with today's LEGO City update and immediately the first illegal building technique with this curved wall going along the train tracks. Having now gained this separated space behind the train tracks, I can start tiling everything with only a few studs being remaining for the details later on. As you might know by now, since this area I'm building right now is a bit further to the front, I'm really ramping up the level of detail right there in comparison to the back of my city. And now having spent three hours preparing and tiling everything, it was finally time to start designing buildings. First of all, I've decided to build this small kiosk right there with all these newspapers stacked onto each other at an angle. Therefore for I was using hinges in order to achieve this effect. For the roof, I now used a snot building technique to get these round edges on top. And then when it came to the placement, I originally designed this kiosk to be next to the train station, actually on top of this platform. But honestly, I really preferred having it down on this newly built area right there and also maybe at an angle and therefore I needed to build something new on this platform next to the train station and first of all decided to add stairs in order to get onto the middle platform of the train station and secondly onto the other side of the train tracks to the marketplace actually. Oh yeah, and also since I was building from the other side, I messed up in between, so I was fixing that right there. Then of course, in order to connect this extended platform with the rest of the train station, I simply decided to extend the exact same pattern towards the right side when you look at the train station. And then, well, in a little bit, I'll also add a few jumper plates in order to add seats, details, minifigures of course, and so on. Now it was time to add the staircase. As you can see right there, I've only added a few stairs because it is so far in the back that you can't really see where the stairs then disappear and therefore I didn't really bother drilling a hole. And then of course, in case you can't use stairs, I also added an elevator in the back with this ramp leading up for wheelchair users or if you want to transport bikes in the train or whatever. And for the style of the elevator shaft, I actually decided not to build it similar to the train station, but to more or less adapt it to the style of the kiosk right next to it, especially when it comes to the roof. You can see that by the building technique right there. And of course, my only wheelchair minifigure is placed right in front of the elevator. For the roof, I've then also decided to use these cut tiles in order to make it just a little bit more interesting. And now when it comes to decorating and adding details to this platform, I firstly decided to add these angled benches because I thought that looks a bit more interesting. And then of course, a ton of minifigures and immediately you can see the train station coming to life. Now next to the train station, I've decided to add a covered bike stand since that is something you can actually always find next to railway stations as far as I can remember, at least here in Europe. And I've also decided to place that at an angle just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And also I thought it was honestly a bit more fitting in this area. Then I finally decided that I want to have the kiosk built in in this corner right there fixed it on one single stud so you can simply rotate it until it is in the exact position you want it to be. It was honestly the easiest solution not using some sort of turntable because you guys always ask me why I'm doing it this way. It's honestly much cheaper than using some sort of special plate that can be rotated. Now, I bought a ton of light bluish gray hinges and now decided to start using them with a small sort of island in the middle of this and now at least still concrete jungle next to the train tunnel. And then in the middle of this island, I've decided to add vegetation as well as a little pond I'm integrating right there at the moment. And for the main part, this was also connected to the rest of the city because sometimes I'm honestly not really planning ahead which was also the case right here. But I've simply connected everything using the remaining studs, covered everything with vegetation, also especially to hide these small gaps that were remaining along the edges, and then finally placed a big tall tree in the middle. Then I also placed a few more flower pots along the train tracks. And now it's time to make a little jump into the past two weeks to be exact. You can even still see the upper platform missing at this point. And I promised you to show what exactly is going on at the ground floor in our LEGO museum as well, since I'm only showing what's happening up in the LEGO city, it's now time to take a look at this middle section right here. First of all, we have to get rid of all the chaos that has accumulated over the past weeks. And now it's time to start painting everything black. Initially, I tried to remove the wallpaper right there and figured it was way too difficult and then decided to be lazy and simply paint over it. And after painting it, <laughs> it was so stupid. It simply peeled off probably because of the moisture of the paint, I guess. But then I've decided, well, okay, 
Let's do it once again. I know it's a bit useless, but honestly, if it looks better afterwards, well, I'll take the extra effort then. So having the wallpaper removed, it was then time to, well, redo everything once again and paint all the walls black. By the way, our idea was when painting everything black to in future draw the attention away from the surroundings and have the focus really laying on the mocks that will be exhibited down in this area right here. And then, well, for the entrance, we simply decided to cover everything in white paint and then at some point, maybe simply cover everything with minifigures. But, well, this is in future then. What we've also then done is cover up the future Star Wars room with more curtains in order to get it even darker in that room. And then back there, underneath the staircase, this is where the moon base is then going to be placed. On the other side of these walls I've painted, will most likely then simply hang on once again black curtains in order to really separate that area from the shop. And now it's time to take a look at what exactly happened inside the Lego factory. Since I've already started sorting everything, I now prepared the most interesting pieces for you. To those of you who don't know how buying Lego from the factory works, you get these bags you can simply fill up and then in front of you, you have literally endless rows of different boxes with all sorts of different bricks and pieces stored into them. Most of them you can buy as many as you want. I did that for example with these columns right here for my mountain. I used them to stabilize the mountain and then some are limited to 100 grams with more wrap pieces but these bricks right here were all unlimited for the hills in the background these are for my airport for example then well i messed up a bit <laughs> that was honestly a bit stupid i bought one bag of hinges and then apparently forgot that i bought one bag and bought another one well now i have a lifetime supply of hinges all this stuff is for my wild west mock which i'm going to continue in the upcoming weeks and then this is where it gets interesting these are all sorts of different printed flat tiles, which is of course much, much more interesting to buy since you pay by weight, meaning 100 grams of this stuff costs exactly the same as 100 basic bricks, for example. And then, well, as you can see, I bought all sorts of different printed tiles, which are interesting. For example, right here, these newspapers, all sorts of different newspapers, actually, which I today, for example, used for my newsstand already. And then this right here, for example, is such an interesting piece. This is a cheese cheese slope, meaning, just look at this. Right here, I have my little cheese stand, which I can now add proper cheese cheese slopes too. I mean, these are these sort of little details I absolutely love. So in the next videos, you'll most likely see me add all these different printed tiles into the city to add more details. Coming back to today's update, what I'm now going to do next is this elevator shaft I've built right there will be built a second time right here in front. So we can now have another path beside the stairs leading up there and then down there to go from one side to the other. Then when it comes to the stairs right there, this is where you can go down. And then on this middle platform in between the two train tracks, this is where the stairs then now lead back up. Then I, of course, still need to show you the before and after picture of today's video. This is what it looked like before and afterwards. I mean, just look at the difference. Finally, this space is now filled up. I was initially thinking about maybe adding also buildings, but when I was experimenting with buildings I had already built right there, I didn't really feel that fit. And now with the new stand and this small green island in the middle, I think this looks much, much better than before. And with that being said, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again in the next one.